Hi, welcome back to the Gem Hawks YouTube channel. I hope you're having a beautiful day and that things are definitely going your way. So today I would like to share with you a technique using one millimeter or 18 gauge round wire, plus also some half round wire. Now I've got a couple of segments here in a rose gold colorway and a silver colorway. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the silver colorway today so that it makes it easier to discern the difference when we're actually wrapping everything together. Now this could be 20 gauge or 21 gauge, which is approximately 0.6 or 0.7 mil deep. So you would probably got buy that by gauge anyway, even if you're here in the UK where I'm based. So those are our two materials. I'm just going to very briefly show you what you could be making. So here's an oversized piece in one of my absolutely massive agate moon cabs. Now these are quite slender. And what I've also got is a Sakura Blossom agate. <laughs> Still got it. <laughs> Cabochon. Now this is much smaller but really quite deep. So I'm going to show you on the smaller, deeper cabochon because that's actually much trickier. If you manage to master a smaller, deep cabochon, you'll find moving up to the larger size actually to be a little bit easier. Things don't get quite so woohoo, because uh, they, they do when you're making a wire work. Sometimes things don't want to particularly sit where you'd like them to. So if you'd like to join me down at the board, I will show you these a little bit closer to begin with. And this is the piece I'm going to be demonstrating making today. And the difference uh, between this one is that it's very, very simple. And with this one, all I've done is I've added an extra piece of the exact same half round wire across the back just for added security. Other than that, the technique is pretty much the same. So we're going to focus on the smaller, deeper cabochon. Now, to begin with, we're working with one millimeter, 18 gauge wire. And I have some here in a raw copper. We're looking to use around about 15 to 18 inches. And what I'm going to do is get that really nice and smooth to begin with. Here's my lovely little Sakura Blossom Agate Moon that we can work with. So I'm going to get some really nice warmth into the wire before I begin. And around about the centre section is where I want to start working the shape of the outside of that crescent. So you could use a form if you wanted to, but I'm just going to show you that if you make your wire nice and smooth and soft to begin with by heating it just gently with your fingers, then you can get a reasonably good shape to work with. If you prefer, you can use any round form. So that's a reasonably good beginning that we've got going on there. So I'm just going to bring the top over slightly and the bottom down up a little bit. And that's approximately in the middle of that length of wire that we're working with. So I'm going to start down at the bottom to create that form and just bring that up a little bit tighter until we start getting the shape following all the way around. Now we're looking to create a form which goes all the way around the outside of the complete shape. We don't want it sitting on top, we want it to be able to sit inside with a little bit of space to actually work with. So I'm just going to grip hold of the wire with my pliers at the point that I want to work with and draw that point back really quite sharply to begin with. Before, again, you could use a form if you want to, but because we've warmed that wire, it is going to make that shape quite nicely. So you will need to modify this to suit your exact cabochon shape that you're working with. And we just want to have a little bit of space around the outside. So because I've made this a little bit too tight, there's too much gap at the end of that section of the moon. So I'm just going to support the end point here just open that up slightly until I can get the cab to sit quite neatly inside the framework. So what we're going to do now is create a point at the top like so and draw that back on itself and we're just going to see what that looks like. Because we warmed the wire if we have indeed messed it up we can just play with that slightly but overall I'm quite happy with how that's sitting. Now, the reason that I've not made the bale sit at the point of the moon is about balance. If you want to have your bale coming at the very, very tip, your moon will sit back on its back like so, which is quite charming. My preference is to go for a little bit more balance. And if you get that 
kind of above the central point just here, you should get more of a balance in wear. So that's the reason for creating the two points rather than having the one point and then the bail coming away at the top. Entirely up to you how you do it, but this is the demonstration I'll be giving you today. So we're going to create some uprights to give us that lovely bail formation. And as I say, it could be centralised around just about here. So I'm going to grip hold of those wires and put some upright bends on them at the 12 o'clock position. Now with your bale, you can do pretty much anything you want, but you just need to make sure that it's not going to be too large or too small. I'm just going to hold that and then form it back on itself. Now again, because we warmed the wire quite extensively beforehand, if this doesn't work for you first time, you've got a little bit of wiggle room. So I want to bring that ever so slightly closer over. So I'm just going to nibble away at the wire like so, and then reform where that upright comes. And then you should be able to get those two uprights slightly closer together. All the while, we want to be able to do this exact thing, which is move the cabochon in and out of the frame. The next thing we're going to do is bring in some finer gauge wire, 0.4 or 26 gauge, just to create a little bit of back and forth weaving on the upright section that will become the bail. Now, I'm sure you've seen me do this many, many times. It's a case of winding on on one side, counting the number of coils you make around the one side, down the middle, exactly the same number of coils on the other side, and then as far as you want to go. If you want a huge bail, like on this one, you'll need to go for about two inches or so. And if you want a slightly smaller bale like this one, probably an inch to an inch and a quarter is sufficient to give you that kind of aperture at the top in a reasonably neat formation. So that's what that will look like once you've woven those wires in together. I've done actually quite a lot here and that's because it gives me the opportunity to create a bale slightly higher up and have an extended neck. Or you can indeed have that meeting right back down at the moon shape. It's entirely up to you. The key point is to ensure that your cabochon moves through that framework. Now, this particular framework here is done in a slightly heavier gauge wire. This is 1.25 or 16 gauge. Both of these will work perfectly well. That just happens to be what I had at the time. And I really like the difference that you see with just a slightly heavier gauge wire makes for a really chonky pendant. So the next thing that we're going to do is bring in some of our half round. Now this particular piece is noted as 21 gauge. This is by Biedelon and it's a German style which is about quarter hard so really quite soft and easy to work with. On the back you'll see it says it's 72 mil which is the top to bottom rather than the across side to side. Now you should be able to find an equivalent of that in the UK really easily, but this is my preference for profiled wires. It does not need any messing with, you don't need to add any warmth or heat to this at all whatsoever. So the first thing we're going to do is just have a quick look at the piece that's already been made. And what I've done is I've started by winding the wire, rounded side up, three times around the upper segment of the moon shape. So this is around about 18 inches or so of our half round wire. Now it, because it lives on a spool or in a little sort of circle, it can be quite tricky to get that out of the way. So very, very gently, I'm going to straighten that a little bit and hook the remainder underneath my desk out of the way. That's just while I'm doing this first part to ensure that I can get this first part shown to you without any masses of wire coiling around. The reason I'm doing this in the two tones is to make sure that you can see exactly what's going on. So I'm going to give myself an excess of wire and start by moulding that around the framework, flat side against my round wire and the rounded side out and that's the way that this design works you get a really beautiful finish but you also get a really good grip on your round wire so once you start to get close to the end there you'll probably want to switch to your pliers to reserve your fingertips stop them from being quite as shredded as mine i'm going to give that a little bit of a squeeze just to make sure that i'm happy with how that's sitting now in order for this piece to be secure what I have done is three bands at the top and three bands at the bottom, and I'll show you how to create that now. The first section is always going to be the trickiest one. 
So what we want to do is to have the cabochon sitting inside the frame, but not going through the frame. So imagine it's flat down exactly in that situation. So I'm just going to press the wire down a moment to give us an idea of size. So you can see that's made quite an ugly form. So I'm just going to round that slightly before we continue. But you can see how much space we need to leave to get the tip of that moon shaped cabochon in. And if I show you at this angle, you should be able to see what I mean. So slotting the cabochon and free dog hair into position. I'm just going to draw the wire down over the surface so you can see what we need to do next, which is to hold that in position. I'm going to very, very gently feed from the middle of my spool of wire. And I'm going to draw that all the way through. Now, if you prefer, you can do this with a series of shorter lengths and just do one wrap at a time. So you'd need a couple of inches, three times on one side, over the surface, wrap around three times. And then, of course, you need to make it secure on the back as well. So I've made my first wrap. And I just want to make sure that that moon does indeed fit inside. Well, there's plenty of space there. So I'm just going to draw that round ever so slightly using my non-dominant hand as a guide and pushing the next section of wire. Again, we're always working with the flat side of the profiled wire against the round side of our framework. So that looks pretty neat to me. I'm just going to give that a gentle, gentle squeeze and then try our moon in for size and make sure that that sits okay. So I'm actually quite happy with that. So what I'm going to do is make sure that what goes across the back is completely flat. That needs to sit completely flat against the back of the frame to create a secure housing. So I'm going to continue without the cabochon in position for this one wrap so you can see exactly how it works. Again, we're pushing from the centre of our length of profiled wire all the way through and very, very gently trying not to overwork the wire around once. Around a second time, it might get caught up, so you just need to gently usher that through. Push those two pieces together and then you can see we've got the appearance of that third wrap coming over the surface. This is the point in time that you're going to need to start leaving that cabochon in position whilst you undertake the rest of the technique. So what I'm going to do is perhaps two wraps at the top and two wraps at the bottom, but the technique would be similar for three wraps or however many wraps you want to, to undertake. You would need to take a good couple to make sure that it was secure. So you could indeed cut this quite a lot shorter and be less frustrated by the length of wire but what I'm going to do is take the end of the wire flat side against the smooth round wire of the frame and just draw that through very very gently just to make sure that it goes around the frame in the correct orientation I'm just going to pop that out for a second so that I can see that that is happening and you can if you need to just give that a bit of an edit with your pliers so I'm going to give that a bit of a tighten up just so I can see exactly the size, the amount of wire I need to use. That looks good to me. Before I pull that all the way through, I'm just pushing that into the frame wire, taking that second side around and pulling that through one last time. Now what can happen with your profiled wires, apart from getting caught in your pliers when you don't want them to, is that they twist as you're working with them is very common and it's why you might wish to work with shorter lengths so what we're going to do is just show you how to overcome that by very very gently bringing that back to true so i'm going to push up through the center of the bead again uh, through the frame sorry all the way around and back across the rear of the design just going to give those two wraps a little bit of a squeeze to make sure that i'm happy and pop my moon bead back into position like so. So what I am going to do is I'm going to cut this shorter to make life slightly easier. You may prefer to do this in two sections. It's entirely up to you. So again, across the back of the design, we're going to go for flat. Push that all the way through once and twice, making sure to keep the flat side of your profiled wire against the framework. And then a third time. Now, I did plan for us to do two at the top and two at the bottom. 
So what we would do now is draw the wire down across the back, making sure that we're not deforming that in any way, like so, until it sits exactly where you want it to. So what, if you have done that a little bit tight, as I have, you can just undo that ever so gently, unwrap and pull that down, because I forgot that we were just doing two and two, and then draw that around again once and twice. And what we're doing up here is building strength to hold the bead or the charm or whatever it is you're working with, the cabochon in position on the back as well as on the front. So that fits quite neatly still and I've got my two and a bit wraps going around the edge all the way over the surface to the far side. Now really this is where it comes into its own having shorter sections of the profiled wire to work with because what we're going to do is just look at the back for a second, take the end of that shorter section of wire and tuck it through the framework again with the flat side always wrapping around the frame. Give that a very gentle coerce into position. Smooth your wires as you go and then all the way back through. So that's two. Let's have a look at that on the front. That looks pretty good. And then you would have uh, the position that you want. If you want to make that equal, you just need to tighten that up ever so slightly. Now, if you want to work with shorter pieces of wire and make your life easier, as long as you have enough crossing over the back, that's absolutely fine. So I'll show you now how to add on a second short section. So I'm going to use approximately, what did we say, about three inches or so of the profiled wire to create individual segments. And if that does look a little bit loose, which that one does, then you can spin that around a little bit more, like so. So all you would then do is add on some extra wraps. So at this point, you don't really want to be taking that bead, that cabochon out of position anymore. So I'm just going to lay that over the surface. And if you look carefully, you can see the ultra shiny side is the flat side, whereas the domed side gives a more silk appearance in the light. So just a case now of <laughs> making it do what you want it to do, like so. Take the tip through the space that we've created around the cabochon. Just get that to push on through. And if you need help with your pliers, then just use your pliers. That's absolutely fine. So I'm going to hold on to the pliers and then wrap that over the surface. So that's two, two wraps rather we've got there at the moment. We're just going to push that tail up inside the framework. Like so until we can grip a hold of that. You might need to uh, use some tweezers if you prefer, but it's relatively simple to get that to come through. And then wrap that all the way around the outside. So that's looking a bit untidy. So I'm just going to take the tip of my pliers and try and draw that around until it sits flat. And then on the back, you could just give that a bit of a squeeze like so and get that to sit together. Obviously you'll have a little bit more time to work with that. So there you go, that's starting to look a little bit neater. You can always push that over if you need to, to get it to sit exactly how you want. So that's the one side. And then on the other side, I'm just going to tuck the slightly longer section of wire up and inside the framework. So that's once and twice all the way around until you meet at the back. So flush cutters, just past the point at which it goes around your frame wire and then give that a bit of a squeeze. Just to get that to sit. There we go. Sometimes it's a bit fiddly, but it's very, very much worth it in the end. And then you can just take a few moments to make sure that that sits exactly how you want it to. Now, if you feel that there are not enough passes of wire across the back, it's really quite simple to add another one on. All I've done with this piece is wrap from one side to the other side and skirt around a central wire. So I'll show you that now. So there's a central wire that we've already got added on. So this is the back of the pendant and what we're doing is we're just securing it now 
obviously the easiest thing to do is go for more wraps around so it's three wraps one side cross flat across the back domed across the front and then it comes down and you do exactly the same until you have that neat appearance so the technique is the same what i'm going to do is just pull the excess through so that's one wrap two wraps And we're going to get that third wrap to pull through give that a bit of a squeeze and then trim away the excess of course when you've got more time and you're sat down at home you can use less wasted wire you can be a bit cleverer about how you add things on but if you want to cross ways with an existing piece of wire on the back we're just going to very very gently lift it and wrap that half round wire one time around the existing wire on the back making sure that we keep the position as we want it to appear and then continue on its way to wherever it makes you happy so i would probably take it down to the center to be honest just to make sure that i'm happy that that is nice and secure on the back as well as on the front so i flip that around sorry if that was a bit fast and then take the tail through again it's easier to work with shorter segments of wire it's very very soft and easy to cut pop the tail through you can wrap this as many times as you want with the additional segments but because i started with three i feel like i want to end with three as well so just giving that a bit of a smooth posting it through that last remaining gap that we have available and then pulling it into position as I say, you can take a little bit more time to get that super neat and tidy and then trim away the correct wire. <laughs> many, many times I've cut the wrong wire. So you look twice and then cut once, as they say in tailoring, measure twice, cut once. And that's the basic idea, albeit we've got two passes on this short demonstration and three passes on this one. Three passes on this one with an extra security pass across the back there. With regards to creating the bale, I've had a couple of people say that I don't show bales often enough, so I'm going to show you one just now. I've come up away from the pendant a couple of maybe 10 millimetres, just under half an inch. This is quite hard to work with because if you remember, this is the 1.25 or 16 gauge wire that I'm working with as the frame. What I'm going to do is bring in my beautiful stepped bale making pliers create a lovely shape around the back there and what you can do is just put an angle even with heavy gauge wire like so all I've done is twisted an angle on the back there I'm going to draw that across the front and that's basically your bale has been made for you but you can straighten that out however you want to you could add some coils you've got loads of wire to work with here and then just tidying things up is pretty quick so that's quite a rough idea of how to create a crescent hold utilizing a round wire for the framework and a half round wire to do the actual wrapping so there are lots of different ways in which you can finish that off i think they look amazing on the bigger ones especially if you do add that little bit of security on the back just to stop it from moving around overly much it's not going to go anywhere in this kind of framework and it's super effective really not that tricky and doesn't take too much time i hope you've enjoyed the tutorial i look forward to seeing you again very very soon do feel free to join me over on my facebook page which is gem hawks and gems gem box every other monday i have a live where i sell such things as cabochons like this for your jewelry making needs have a lovely wonderful day and i'll see you again very very soon bye for now